Welcome to ITU Telecom World 2018 here in Durban, South Africa, where I'm very pleased to be joined in the studio today by Mr. Bilal Jamusi, who is Chief of Study Groups of uh, TSB for ITU. Bilal, welcome to the studio. Thank you very much for having me. Now, I'm having you here in the studio because uh, there's a special session called the Rise of the MVNOs happening here at ITU Telecom World. Perhaps you could tell us what, what it's all about, what are MVNOs all about, and uh, basically why are they rising, and uh, perhaps we will, you know, then we'll talk a little bit about the opportunities and, uh, and the obstacles and challenges. So MVNOs are really, in a nutshell, leveraging existing infrastructure to provide innovative services. Um, and uh, the, the reason we call it the rise of the MVNOs is that we have seen recently a surge in interest in, uh, by MVNOs in joining ITU. Uh, for uh, essentially two main reasons. One is the uh, numbering resources that the ITU offers to allow for MVNOs and operators to interconnect around the world. And the second is the ecosystem that we provide for economic and financial discussions. In terms of the opportunities for MVNOs to partner with operators and, uh, and various industry verticals, what are, what are, perhaps, what are some of those that, that are available? So the, um, uh, the ecosystem that uh, the study groups provide um, uh, allow the MVNOs to have the conversation uh, once in a, in a multilateral setting, uh, whether the conversation is about a new financial model, uh, regulation, uh, uh, new standards and technical uh, recommendations. Um, the, uh, the multilateral platform that pr we provide at an international level allows th those MVNOs to have the conversation once and then perhaps apply it multiple times around the world. And and so that the ecosystem that the ITU provides in a fairly neutral and, uh, and, um, and open uh, to, uh, to players around the world, whether they're operators, MVNOs, vendors, or regulators from around the world, is quite unique. Perhaps we could talk a little bit about ITU's 901 codes and how they can support IoT and, and MVNO business. Yeah, let me first explain what the 901 codes are. Normally, if you're in a country, you have a country code. So, uh, for example, in Switzerland, it's plus 41, Tunisia, 216. Uh, but if you're operating in multiple countries, you get a 901 code because you're not in one jurisdiction, one country, one nation. And uh, these have become very uh, critical for IoT because um, when IoT devices, and the device could be a vehicle, for example, uh, and is connected with a, with a telephone number, E164 number, uh, instead of having a country code, it will have a 901 code, which allows it to essentially uh, operate in multiple uh, geographies and, and multiple countries um, uh, in a fairly seamless and, uh, and uh, cost-effective way. And so uh, the ITU is the international regulator to provide those codes because normally when you get a country code, you get it from the, uh, the you, we give the country code to a national regulator from ITU and then within the country, it's the national regulatory authority that uh, provides the, the, the numbers, the phone numbers. But when it's multiple countries, ITU becomes the regulator. And so the TSP director assigns those codes to MVNOs or other operators that uh, are um, operating cross jurisdictions. And then uh, they, those allow the IoT machines, could be vehicles or um, devices providing international Wi-Fi connectivity, for example, um, uh, they, they, they would get the code from us to enable that uh, new service. And how long does that take? I mean, I know obviously in terms of launching a satellite, it can take many years. What about getting a, a 901 code? Uh, it takes uh, a few months at least because uh, we're very careful. It's a very scarce resource. It's an international resource. Uh, we don't want to make any mistakes in terms of setting precedent of allocating something to an operator where there is a business behind it and a commercial deployment behind it and then uh, realize that uh, perhaps it should not have been allocated. So we have a uh, numbering coordination team um, chaired by the chair of our study group two and has a team of experts uh, with the chair, including the TSB as an advisor, uh, to look at the, all the applications, do a thorough analysis, ensure that it's a legitimate uh, request, uh, backed by a network in multiple countries, and then if we uh, are satisfied with all the criteria that are documented in our uh, international standard recommendation from the ITU, then the uh, advice goes to the TSB director to allocate the code, and then we can allocate the code. So a minimum, uh, a couple of months, uh, but it could take longer if there is questions and answers between the committee and the operator. Now, uh, IoT, Internet of Things, players and, and MVNOs are among the new market uh, segments entering the ITU membership. Perhaps you could tell us a little bit more about the evolution of ITU membership. 
Uh, we have seen recently a great evolution in the, both the sector members, which are the companies that have access to all the study groups. I think we have 18 new members just in 2018, and uh, as well as associate members, so members that are interested in a single study group. For example, some of the MVNOs may be interested in only study group two that is doing the numbering. Uh, other MVNOs perhaps are interested in the uh, economic and financial and regulatory discussions, study group three. So they become an associate of that study group. But overall this year I think we have uh, more than uh, 24 uh, to, to 30 new associate members globally um, and they are in other sectors. For example in the automotive sector we have new automotive companies that are members of the ITU. We have financial institutions that are members of the ITU. Um, so a lot of the verticals that need ICT as a foundation uh, are joining the ITU because of that intersection of ICT with the verticals. Okay, we're talking, let's talking about verticals. What is ITU's role in supporting industries such as automotive that you mentioned, health uh, and financial services? So in the automotive uh, sector, in addition to our uh, yearly uh, future network car that we do in the uh, Geneva International Car Show, uh, we have a collaboration on ITS standards, a group, a standards group that works on it. Uh, and uh, recently, one of our study groups launched a uh, vehicular multimedia uh, focus group that brings the vehicle industry and the multimedia industry together uh, because the cars are getting connected and uh, the cars have a lot of ICT embedded in them uh, and uh, some people spend a lot of time in the vehicle so providing adequate multimedia services in the vehicle is an important aspect and um, I think what uh, we can bring here is the conversation between the uh, uh, auto regulatory bodies like UNECE and uh, the uh, telecom regulatory bodies, uh, ITU and the members of the ITU. And that intersection of the stakeholders uh, is very important for being able to deploy and, and having an enabling environment for deployment. And finally, have you got a, a message with regards to standards perhaps uh, for the, uh, the audience here at ITU Telecom World? Uh, standards are critical for uh, global deployment. Um, ITU is really a platform op open for business. We can do this very rapidly. Um, in the uh, example of automotive, for example, when we talk about autonomous driving, uh, you might need an MVNO even on a national level because an auto autonomous car needs to have constant connectivity and knowledge of the map and the changes in the road conditions. And so even within one country, if you have multiple operators, it's easier if you have an MVNO, for example, providing a connection, a connectivity for that uh, auto manufacturer. Um, so we see this convergence between other verticals and uh, our space to be quite exciting and bringing new membership, new uh, problems to solve, and new standards to develop. Well, Jim, thank you very much indeed. Pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.